Okay, hi guys. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Anthony Gale. Uh, like, like Brett said, uh, I was on the team with Carl this past year uh, in, in Sochi, Russia, where we brought home the bronze medal. Um, but my, my journey to Sochi kind of began, like Carl, when I turned seven, I, I got involved in sledge hockey through a player um, at the Halton Peel Cruisers by the name of David Ali, who, who passed on the information of the, of the, cruiser, of the cruisers organization um, onto my grandparents, and then fortunately they, they passed it on to my parents, and I got involved right away. Uh, and, and like a typical Canadian Canadian kid, I loved I loved the game of hockey growing up. I am still a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I guess I still love them, even though they kind of hate me. But um, I still enjoy the game of hockey. I still I still watch every hockey game that I can. And um, and when I started to play sledge hockey, it to me it was hockey. It was the way I could play. And and even even when I was younger, playing playing road hockey on the street with my buddies and. Um, I, I still wanted to be the Wayne Gretzky and, and all that kind of stuff, but when I realized that I couldn't couldn't stand up on skates to, to play stand up to play the stand up game, uh, I, I really took to sledge hockey. And um, when I was eight or nine, so I was playing for about a year or two. Um, there was a guy on our team, Greg Westlake, who's now our captain on the national team. He he was on the cruisers, and. Um, he went on to make the national team. When I was very young, I played a season or two with him, and and right when he made the team, that kind of that kind of hit me that I played with a guy who who's now going on to do bigger and better things in the sport of sledge hockey. And that's when I realized that there was a, a national team, that the, it was a Paralympic sport. And that was really the first time that I had really heard about Paralympics. I didn't really know about it. I was fairly new to to Paralympic sport and the Paralympic movement. So right from there, that was a goal of mine, and I, I wanted to push for it. And at a young age, just kind of you kind of think that's unrealistic or whatever. And um, but as I got older, and I started to I started to take hockey a bit more seriously. I, I played on Team Ontario when I was uh, 12 for the first time, uh, and then again I played when I was 16 for a year. And I I got to try out uh, for the first team for the first time on the national team um, when I was 16. And for me, just like Carl said, I, I wasn't going in expecting to make it. I, I was the young, one of the youngest guys there, and I was there for the experience. And it was it was an unbelievable experience, and, and it kind of helped me into the hockey player that I am now. I, I guess it kind of it motivated me a bit more when, after the tryout was done, we we had our individual meetings, and they called me in, and I came in. And, I'm not a big guy, but even four years ago, I was still a lot smaller than I am now. And they, and they, they told me I'm a good little player. So I guess little player is, is not the kind of words you want to hear as a hockey player. But um, they, then they went on to, to tell me that they didn't have a spot for me on the team this year, but they did see, they did, they did think that I could have a future on that team. And right there, that was, that was kind of another, another step for me was thinking like, wow, like. The coaches of the national team just told me that they think I'm going to make this team one day. And so I went home and I took that as the greatest thing ever. I didn't make the team and that was still one of the best things. And I went home and that summer, um, the following year, just before tryouts, when I got the invite again, I was, I was pushing myself all year, playing hockey in the gym all the time. And finally, that, the next year, I turned 17 just before the tryout. Um, and I, I fortunately made it. It was the year uh, after the Vancouver Paralympic Games and unfortunately Canada finished fourth so everybody was pretty down on themselves. All the team, all the players that were there coming back, they, they were all they, not meddling at home is, is obviously not the best the best feeling in the world and especially coming off their, their gold medal win in 2006 at the, at the Paralympics in, in Torino. Uh, having to finish fourth at, in your home country. Um, so there was quite a few changes that year. And as a 17 year old playing on a men's team, I'm playing with guys that are 30, 35 years old. It was, a, it was a pretty big change for me, playing with guys that were closer to my age with the cruisers and some guys that were a bit older than me, but still it was a higher level of hockey and um, it was something that I, I was really looking forward to. And, and that year I put all the work in that I could and, um, and, I, and I knew that four years down the road, Sochi was, was the main goal and that's what I wanted. But there was a few bumps along the way where we had a couple world championships and 
the first time I, I, uh, I went to a world championship in Hamar, Norway in 2012. That was the first big tournament that I had been a part of. And that year, again like this year, we, we lost to the Americans in the, in the semi-final. And that, that right there was like basically what losing felt like. When you, when you train all, all year for, for a gold medal and, and then you, you're cut short in one game. We were, we were undefeated going into that game and the Americans had lost the game. And that's why we crossed over to their pool and had to play them. And unfortunately, they got the, the better of us. But And then for our team in that game, uh, we were all pretty down on ourselves. Obviously, you lose that game and you realize you have to play for bronze. is uh, is hard to swallow. But for our team to battle back that year and, and, and to, to come out on top in the, with the bronze medal, it wasn't what we wanted, but it was still, it was still something to be very proud of and, and something that I'll never, I'll never forget. And then this past, or uh, two years ago in 2013, or two seasons ago, um, when we went on to South Korea, right after we won that bronze in, in Norway, it was something that once the summer came along and yeah, it's our off season and stuff, but right away it was next year we have another world championship and we need to come out on top. We need to, we need to be number one going into, into Russia the following year. So again, that whole season was, was a long road to, to Korea and, and when we got there, we were, again, we were on a roll and, and, and we won our semifinal game. We had to play uh, the Czech Republic and, and the US had beat uh, Russia in their semifinal. And so we had to meet the US again. Uh, and this time, thankfully, we came out on top and, and, we, won that, and we won that gold medal on a score of one nothing. And then I guess this year, this year was the biggest year. This is what we had all trained for for the last four years. Some of us, even longer than that, all the guys that made the team in 2010, even the four years before that building up and they didn't come home with a medal. This is eight years for them in the, in the making that they wanted a, a Paralympic gold medal. Um, and like Carl said, when we got there, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't a, it didn't feel like we were there when we first got there. We were, we were there pretty early and, and we needed to, uh, we were practicing for about 45 minutes a day. We were there a week before the opening ceremonies and we were so bored. So we were playing street hockey and we were playing pool and playing all these arcade games that they had set up for us and all that. Um, but once the game started, once we got our, once we went to the opening ceremonies, that was a whole nother experience on its own, aside from playing at the Paralympics, just the opening ceremonies where there's 50,000 people and you're walking out into the, onto the stage and even though you're on the stage for 30 seconds, it feels like it's forever. And it's just probably right now the coolest thing I've ever done in my entire life, aside from playing. Um, but once, once we finished the opening ceremonies, that's when we realized that we're at the at the Paralympics. We're at the biggest stage um, for our sport. And 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 when the game started, we, we had to play an afternoon the next day, an afternoon game the next day. And, and again, we, we had a really good start to the tournament. We were undefeated going going into the into the playoff round. And again, the U.S. lost to to Russia in their preliminary, and we had to we had to cross over to play the U.S. and. They got the better of us, and the, we, we actually lost three nothing. It's I guess would have been better if we had at least got one goal, but um, it was still an unbelievable, an unbelievable experience to, for me to have, and something I'm never going to forget. But when when we're on the ice, I remember I was on the ice until the last until the last second went out, and I remember being. Like I remember looking up at the clock when there was like four or five seconds left and we were in their zone and we had a pretty good chance. We almost had a goal. Um, we just wanted to get one. We we're not going to score three goals in the last seven seconds of a game. So we wanted to break their shutout and kind of get one past them and, and we, we had a pretty good chance. And, and I remember looking back, we had a face off with about five seconds left and I, I saw that five second mark and right away it started to hit me that our, our gold medal dream was, was done. And I like, I know when we got back into the dressing room, there was guys in tears. I was in tears. It was just, that was four years in the making. There's a whole bunch of bumps along the way, but from that first world championship that I took part in in 2012, that was the first step. And this was the main goal. And, and to realize that that, that that dream is over of a, of a Paralympic gold medal was, was 
a tough pill to swallow and it was heartbreaking. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's just a game, it's just a, just a sport, whatever. And, but that was my life for four years, even before that, five years, like when I first went to my first tryout, it was, it was heartbreaking. And, and again, for our team to battle back and to get back in the right mindset to play that bronze medal game was, was huge. It showed a lot of character for our team. And, and thankfully, we came out on top beating the Norwegians, uh, who actually beat Canada in, in 2010. For the, for the bronze medal when we were at home, but it, it's, it's still something that I'm extremely proud of, and I know Carl and the entire team is extremely proud of our, of our accomplishment this year. Uh, obviously, it's not what we wanted, so hopefully next year we have another world championship, so hopefully we'll be able to, to pick that one up, and then a couple years down, down the road, we have to go to, to Pyeongchang, South Korea for the next Paralympic Games. Um, but the, 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 one of the coolest things for me was in Russia, at the opening ceremonies, they had um, the entire show was unbelievable. We didn't really have a, really, a very good vantage point from where we were sitting, so we couldn't really see a whole lot of the effects that were seen on TV or on the live stream. Um, but one of the coolest things for me was near the end, there was this big ship, like a huge boat, and it came through the entire stage. And there was all these people that came out running, running out onto the stage before the boat came out. And they're holding these white plastic um, square boards over their heads. Excuse me. And uh, when the when the boat would come through, the people that were holding the boards would run away when the boat got close to them. And that was supposed to be breaking the ice. And so also breaking down barriers, because at that time it was this year was the first year or the first time that the Paralympic Games were held in Russia. So as most of you guys know, or if you don't know, the, the Paralympics are held about two, two and a half, three weeks after the Olympics. And in the same, same city, same country, all that stuff. Um, but in, I think it was in the 80s, they had the, the Olympic Games, the Summer Olympic Games in Moscow. And uh, Russia totally refused to have the Paralympic Games in their country don't really know why, like I don't know the whole reasoning behind it, but I just know that it was just the way that disabled people and disabled sports were, were kind of treated over there at that time. So I don't know where they were held after, but I just know that the, the Paralympic Committee had to find a new place to hold the Games. So when, when Russia decided that they were going to have the Paralympic Games in the same city, the same, using the same facilities, the same village and everything, it was huge. It was huge for Paralympic sport and the Paralympic movement and Russia as a country. It was huge for them. And, and that was when I kind of realized that like, this is pretty cool as a side, as a side note for us to, to take part in the first ever Paralympic Games in the country of Russia. And then when the Games were finished, another cool thing, I guess it's kind of the same thing, is the closing ceremonies. So when we first got there, they had this huge, like the word impossible. We couldn't really read it from our point of view, um, but we, we, had this, we had a couple TV monitors where we could see everything that was happening. So it said impossible, and there was a guy, a big rope that came down, and a guy wheeled up in his wheelchair, had no legs, and he climbed this rope, and it was about 100 feet in the air, and he climbed it all the way to the top of the word. And he just kind of like hung there for, like he was up there for like a couple minutes, which was crazy to just hang 100 feet in the air. and. At that time, when he got to the top, an apostrophe came down from the ceiling in between the I and the M. So it no longer read impossible, it said I'm possible. Um, so again, just to, to go back to the whole situation there where they didn't have the Paralympics there in the 80s and now they did, it was breaking down that barrier with the boat again, like breaking down the barrier that they were allowing people with disabilities and, and disabled sport into their country and, and accepting it as as just a sport and accepting people with disabilities as, as a normal human being and person that can accomplish anything. Um, so like Carl said, like my main message also is it's pretty cliche and I know if you've heard any kind of motivational speaker talk, they all say that anything's possible, the only person standing in your way is yourself and it's all cliche but it's really true. Anything you want to do and you put your mind to it and like he said, if you wake up every morning and you realize that that's what you want to do, go out and do it. And if you put the work in, you, you're motivated and, and you want it, take it. It's, a, it's yours and, 
and nobody can take that away from you. Only you're stopping yourself. So, um, yeah, that's <laughs> it's as 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 funny as it sounds. It's 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 true. So thank you.